Hi, I'd like to share with you a conversation that I often have with some of my students who are psychology majors wondering about what sort of work they can do with children and adolescents after they finish their undergraduate work. My name is Dr. Nancy Robel and I'm a professor of psychology at U of M Dearborn, but I also do some consulting work as a child psychologist. As you can see, I'm in a clinical office here today rather than in my academic office. And of course, I have tools of the trade behind me, which include games that we play with kids to help them identify feelings and traumas and things that they've had in their lives. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist, which means I had to go to school for a long time to get a PhD and then also pass a licensing exam. Currently, I teach undergraduate classes that involve childhood problems like child psychopathology and abnormal psychology, but I also teach graduate courses where I teach my graduate students how to assess children and other people with problems that they have and how to guide people to getting appropriate treatment. So how did I end up being a child clinical psychologist? Well, I went kind of a roundabout way with this. I actually started out in my bachelor's work getting a degree in special education. And about my sophomore year, I was a little unhappy with that. I felt like I wasn't sure I wanted to be a teacher all the time for my whole life. And I also was really interested in psychology. So my goal was that eventually I would go on to become a psychologist to get more graduate training in that. But in the meantime, I wanted to pay off my student loans. And at the time, you could get forgiveness from student loans if you taught special ed. So I went ahead and taught special ed. I was a teacher in a resource room for learning disabled kids for a couple of years. And then I also had a self-contained room for kids that had intellectual and developmental disabilities. And these were both in a middle school setting, which made it kind of interesting. But I wanted to do that for a year or so, ended up doing it for three years, but then, the, then my question was, what next? What do I want to do with my background in psychology and which direction should I go? And I thought about becoming either a clinical psychologist or a school psychologist. It would have been kind of logical for me to be a school psychologist because I had that background in schools. But when I looked at what the difference was at the time, I thought, oh, school psychologists only do testing all day. It seems like that's all they did is test kids to get them to qualify for programs and things. And I saw clinical psychologists being like this guy in the picture where they have adoring children around them and they're doing therapy with them and helping them through life's problems. Well, I didn't really know what I was talking about at that time. I'm happy I chose to be a clinical psychologist, but there's some great fields that involve kids that aren't necessarily just clinical psychology. So I'm going to walk you through what the differences are and some things you can do with graduate degrees and also some things you actually can do with your undergraduate degree in psychology. So looking at child and adolescent clinical psychology, People who study and work on those areas, they develop and they apply scientific knowledge to the delivery of services specifically for infants, toddlers, children, and adolescents. They engage in a lot of assessment. So even though in my mind, just school psychologists did all this testing, I do a lot of testing as a clinical psychologist because I'm trying to help identify the diagnosis for a child that might lead to appropriate treatment for them. And also, we want to look at preventing problems in kids as well. So we look at a wide range of biological problems, cognitive problems, emotional, developmental problems, and also behavioral problems that kids have. You do need to have a four-year PhD degree if you want to be a fully licensed psychologist like I am. But there are some other options, like in Michigan, for example, you can work at a master's level. You just have to work under someone's supervision. So even some of our former graduate students will see someone like me for an hour, a month or so to get that supervision that's required of them because of having just the two-year degree. And it seems to work out fine for them. They get a lot of business and they, they do pretty well. So what types of places might you work if you were either a doctoral or a master's level clinical psychologist? Well, you might work in a practice, a private practice or mental health clinic like the one I'm in today. You could do individual therapy, family therapy, and of course, like I said, I do lots and lots of assessment for cognitive, behavioral, and emotional problems. You might work in a hospital, and this could be a psychiatric hospital where you're working primarily with mental health problems and behavioral problems that kids might have. But many of our former students actually end up working on pediatric units. So what they're doing is helping guide kids through 
more sort of chronic illnesses that they have, even dealing with kids with cancer diagnoses or needing major surgeries and things like that. You might also work at a family health center. There's a new area, a relatively new area of clinical psychology where we call it behavioral or integrated behavioral medicine. And what people do is work right alongside doctors and nurses and other health professionals dealing with problems that involve psychological elements as well, like asthma, pain, obesity, um, behavioral issues, ADHD, anxiety, all these things that people oftentimes go to their regular physician for, but they could really use the help of a psychologist who might be right on hand to deal with them with those problems as well. Psychologists work in forensic settings, but it's not all like the forensic things that you see on TV. If you're working with kids in forensic settings, what we're talking about may be criminal justice settings, maybe working with kids who've had conduct problems and considered to be delinquents, but you might also work in a family court setting where you might be helping kids adjust to circumstances like being removed from a home due to abuse or dealing with custody issues relating to divorce. Lots of different areas where we can be really helpful to kids who are going through some tough times, even with their own behavior or behavioral things going on in their families as well. Psychologists also consult with schools and other agencies who might need our guidance in terms of how to handle childhood problems that they may be dealing with in their particular agencies. So this is what clinical psychologists do. Now the next question you might have is, what does school psychologists deal with? Well, it's not just testing like I originally thought. They do deal with educational and developmental problems that impact instruction and learning, so that is a big part of what they do. But they also deal with social and interpersonal problems and disabilities and disorders that might affect learning and school but they might also affect behavior and affect adjustment as someone goes from school age years into the world of work. So kind of getting them to be ready to go out there at the end of their schooling. They do tend to deal with other issues like they might be dealing with chronic or acute situations like a personal or a school crisis. They also might deal with adverse social situations that may threaten the health of a child or an adolescent like violence in the community, delinquency, teenage pregnancy, substance abuse. Again, many of the same things that clinical psychologists might come into contact with as well. And I wanna make a note here that they need a bachelor's degree. They also do need a graduate degree, but it's not necessarily a PhD. They actually get a degree that's called an educational specialist degree. And this is typically not through a psychology department. It's more apt to be through an education department, but there's some variation in that. And you can look online and research that either through the American Psych Association website or also other websites that specifically deal with school psychology. So how do school psychologists engage? Well, they basically help children and they help families identify and resolve problems that involve adjustment and learning. They also assess academic skills and aptitude for learning so that they can help make decisions, for example, about placing children in special education services and developing individual educational plans. They also do determine social, emotional, and mental health status similar to what a clinical psychologist does in order to see if a child needs services that aren't just educational, but more mental health type services. They do a lot of collaboration with other adults. They work with teachers about how to manage children in their classrooms. They work with other school personnel who may be involved with the child's case, like for example, a speech therapist or an occupational therapist. They also may need to manage crises. If you think about it, in the course of recent decades, Lots of crisis situations happen in school, like violence, um, you may have death of a classmate, illness of children, or even some community trauma that might impact the kids in the school. So many different things that they might get involved in. And again, it's not just about testing like I used to think. Now, you might want to get a different sort of a degree that's not a psychology degree, but rather a master's in social work degree. This is kind of a versatile degree that many of our psych undergrads think about pursuing, and they can work in a lot of different settings. And some of the settings you might not think about would include actually working in a medical center as a social worker, so helping children and families deal with some of the crises and some of the resources that they may need to get if they have a, a particular medical problem. There are also school social workers who deal with helping 
get a child in contact with necessary resources and maybe managing some family circumstances and things that might impact, impact their learning. So again, social workers do a lot of work with kids in clinical settings like I'm in as well, but they also work in medical and school settings. So there's lots of, op of opportunities out there for people with social work degrees that are really pretty useful. So what if you don't want to go to graduate school? Maybe you're at a point in your life where you've had enough school or you've got a complicated life where this isn't something you could fit in financially or otherwise right now. Well, you might have thought there's not a lot you could do with your psych major, but there actually are some things that you might not be aware of that you could do. One of the things you could do is you could become a caseworker with a bachelor's degree. Now, some people do have master's degrees who work as caseworkers, but there are bachelor's level positions that you can do. And you might work in places like a family service agency or a community service agency. And what they do is basically assess clients and their families. Um, they look for the types of needs that they have and they help connect them with services and resources that they need. Another kind of degree or a, a type of a certification you can get that I think is really interesting is a child life specialist. I really didn't know about that job myself in the past, but I had one of our master's level students actually was getting, in addition to her master's degree, a certification as a child life specialist. But this is something you can do with your bachelor's degree. These are people who work in pediatric hospitals or they might also work in a pediatric physician or dental office. And what they do is they take their knowledge of psychology, especially developmental psychology and, and maybe some child clinical psychology, and they help reduce stress in the medical or dental setting. They might do things like preparing a child or supporting them during medical procedures. So again, utilizing your knowledge and your ability as sort of a semi-psychologist, but applying it to kids in, in more medical sorts of settings. So really useful work and they, they can oftentimes be employed by places like Children's Hospital or something like that. One more job I wanna tell you about that you could do with a bachelor's is you could become a board certified assistant behavior analyst. This is something that you can do and you would be working independently with children and their families, but you'd be doing that under the supervision of somebody who has a master's level or a higher degree in applied behavioral analysis. Oftentimes these are people who serve individuals who have a diagnosis of autism or they're on the autistic spectrum somewhere. You can also assist people who have other sorts of developmental disabilities. They work with people applying techniques that come from sort of the science of behavior analysis. It came out of a long tradition of behavioral psychologists from way back in the 1950s. And they use the tools of behavior analysis to teach people how to communicate, how to socialize, and basically how to become independent adults, even though they have some pretty significant developmental problems. On our campus, what you might be able to do is complete a degree in psychology, but at the same time, take some of the courses through our education department that would allow you to get an additional certification and eventually to get credentialed in order to do this work. So I hope this gives you some idea of some of the things that you could actually do. If you'd like to learn more about the fields in general and just learn more about kids' problems, um, I'd be happy to see you in some of my online or face-to-face -face classes that I teach. Again, I teach child psychopathology probably every semester, including oftentimes in the summer. I teach abnormal psychology, as many of my colleagues do. And then also we have a new class we're developing at a 200 level that's called an intro to mental health and adjustment. You may not get a lot of introduction to child disorders in there, but some things that would definitely serve you as you look towards a career in the clinical area. Thanks for listening and I hope to see you in the classroom soon.